This video represents a, well, a summary of what I learned on my first ever prairie dog hunt in the state of Colorado. If you've come here for epic scope cam footage, I'm sorry to disappoint you. The truth is, I was having so much fun and learning so much that I never even took the time to attach a scope cam. You might ask why I even bothered to make a video. The reason for this video is to share with you my learning experience as I went into a new environment which included learning new regulations and new tactics for humanely and safely taking pest animals. It looks like we're going to have a beautiful day. The uh, sun's going to be shining. We'll have some clouds. Uh, this is not my area of expertise, but I am going to meet a local expert. You may know him as the Prince of Pellets. I'm talking about Joe from Predator International. Uh, he's got a number of permissions and we're gonna go see if we can clear out an area. Um, the purpose uh, for this expedition, if you will, is to help out the landowners. Um, a lot of these areas are ranching properties and the prairie dogs dig series of tunnels and if livestock comes across one of those tunnels, it's a really strong likelihood that when they step in the hole, you wind up with an animal that's got a broken leg. And uh, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's a cow or a horse that has to then be put down. So uh, we're going to try and protect the environment for the animals that are intended to be there, um, at least as far as the land owner is concerned. So before we get out to the field and our first attempt at knocking out a prairie dog, it's necessary to spend a little bit of time trying to figure out what exactly the rules are in Colorado about shooting prairie dogs. I started with the wildlife regulations. In Colorado, if animals, specific animals, including prairie dogs, are creating a hazard for livestock or are damaging crops or farm property, they can be eliminated. Not only can they be eliminated by the farmer or rancher, um, but it could also be a family member or what the state law calls an agent. So someone who's been brought in with the purpose of handling that animal. The law also specifies how that animal can be handled or removed, or in this case destroyed, and air guns are on that list. So, so far, I'm in business. In Colorado, the state is very clear that you have to be in compliance with local restrictions, which can be, well, more restrictive. The area that we were shooting during this event is not subject to any of these local laws, so again, we're in good shape. So the next question gets into licensing. In Wisconsin I need a small game license to shoot pigeons and starlings and sparrows which are the normal things I shoot as pests on farms. In Colorado you do not need a license to do that either as the landowner or as the agent of the landowner. And they have a fairly long list of what can be shot, and again, it includes prairie dogs. So it appears that I don't need a license because I am shooting on private property. Um, there's a blurb in the Colorado manual about invasives, and then it goes on to talk about seasons and bag limits for small game animals within the state. Now I looked specifically at the prairie dog list and for private land it's year-round and unlimited so we're good. Now here's where it got interesting. In the section on shooting invasives it talks about no license being required but it does mention this thing called a hunter education card. Now before you can get anything to get you out in the field shooting at animals in Colorado, you need to not only have taken a hunter's education course, 
but you need to prove that you've taken a hunter's education course. Now, some of you have seen me in a video, and you've seen the gray hair, and the gray hair and the beard. Um, I took hunter safety back in the 1970s. Um, the list then was not computerized, and I do not have that original card. So I have a Wisconsin hunting license, several of them, but no proof of hunter's safety. Fortunately for me, and others like me, Colorado, if you're 50 years of age or older, will allow you to test out. It's a 50 question test, it's timed, and you have 30 minutes. There's also about a $25 fee for the exam, and you only get to take it once, and if you fail it, there is no other recourse for you but to take Hunter Safety, the full class. Well, I took the test, and fortunately, passed. With all the legalities and formalities taken care of, it's time to head back out to the field. We got out early with the hopes that the dogs would still be up sunning themselves. The most important thing with any hunting or pest control operation is making sure that you have permission. Um, I had the good fortune to be invited by my friend Joe to come out and shoot today. So the permission portion of the equation was already handled and uh, very thankful and a big shout out to Joe who many of you will know as the Lord of Lead. Uh, Joe is one of the main guys at Predator International and is responsible for bringing a whole lot of good ammo, great ammo, uh, into the breaches of our rifles. So shout out to Joe. Thank you very much for the invite. The first task once we were out at the ranch was to fill up the impact. I'm shooting the FX Impact M3 in 30 caliber and I'm using the Element Optics Titan Scope. I'm filling using AC power on the Air Venturi Nomad 2 compressor. I'm going from 150 bar to 250 bar. In the end, it took me just under seven minutes to fill. Now remember, this is the M3 700 Sniper, so it's got the 580cc tank, not the, I guess, more standard 480 tank. Starting things off, we have my host, Joe. Some of you know him as the Lord of Lead, taking a shot on a prairie dog offhand. Oh, that was it, man. <laughs> that was it. Hey, uh, uh, Rick Rain? Rick who? Woo! <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> ah! <laughs> there you go. What were you shooting on that one? Oh, 25 escape with some slugs. I can't say what they are yet, but... um. Predators bringing in some stuff, so that's all I can say. Uh, freehand, about 100 yards. I don't know who Rick Ream is. I don't even know who Rick is, man. I know Paul. I know my son Christian. I don't know who Rick is. Yo, Dude, Rick, that was a, where you at? That was a sweet shot. <laughs> and uh, I think when you guys see these slugs come to market, uh, terminal performance on that is, uh, is pretty damn good. Yeah, look at the entry. That was a good shot. Yep. Yeah. All right, back in the hole. Hey, everybody. Joe at Predator, Wisconsin Air Gunner, a.k.a. Paul Clark, PJ. Paul, well, what you got going on right there, man? Well, we got Prairie Dog here. Uh, this is my longest confirmed shot with an air gun, 169 yards. I saw it. We were over there by that uh, red barn over there, a little fence line. And this guy popped up and uh, took it with the uh, Impact M3. Shooting 44 grain JSB pellets. Uh, say the pellet again. That's a JSB pellet from uh, Predator International importer here to the U.S. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, Paul. It was a great shot. Paul's longest shot, and I got I got to bring Paul out in his first P dog hunt, his first longest shot ever, and on a P dog. 
Woo! Awesome, man. Thanks, hey, Joe. Yeah. It. Hey, um, too fast for you. You could be out here, man. You chose not to. You live in Cali. Can't help you. <laughs> so you may be disappointed that there's no scope cam today. Um, I'll explain why in just a minute. But uh, so far there's four of us out here, and I think we've probably put about 20 prairie dogs down. I know I'm good for five of them at least. Um, and hopefully you'll see uh, some video of the recovery of my long shot. Um, as far as why, why no scope cam, um, I'm concentrating on learning how to do this on this venture out. Um, this is very different from most of the shooting I do. Um, and the goal of today's video is to pass along some of those things that I've learned. Um, first up, ranging is challenging on these flat open areas. I'm used to ranging a, a roof line or a silo um, or a, a corn pile at the base of a silo or something like that or a bird up on a rafter. Very easy to range. Um, here, you just got, in some cases, 200 yards of relatively flat scrub brush land. Um, and when you're shooting as I am with pellets, um, and, and this is a great environment for slugs, but that's not what I shoot for the most part. But when you're shooting pellets, uh, once you get past 80 yards with the 30 cal, um, and, and maybe, maybe that's closer to 70 yards, you're really on the downward decay part of the trajectory. So having accurate range is everything in trying to place a pellet on top of a prairie dog. Um, and like I said, I'm out here to learn how to do this, um, not out here as somebody who really has my feet wet and uh, I'm, I'm just ready to go. So it's my first time shooting prairie dogs, first time shooting um, at this particular elevation. And that's something else I've learned. Um, the air's a little thinner here. And uh, as I've been using Strelock, actually most of my initial shots have been high. And um, so I'm shooting over. And some of that may be just not getting the range perfect um, but I think some of it is also the fact that I'm at elevation and I'm us usually at home shooting at about 1,000 feet elevation and here uh, I'm, you know, nearly a mile high. So uh, that has a little bit of an effect on it too. My uh, future should have me out here uh, again, uh, hopefully pretty soon. And uh, for those of you who want video of the shots, um, I'll, be, uh, I'll be able to... Uh, to get that for you. Uh, but today was just an opportunity to come out and learn some new things, do a different kind of shooting. And uh, this is a, really the first outing for the Impact M3. And uh, it's a great shooting gun and very accurate. Uh, set up by Utah Air Guns is phenomenal. Uh, definitely five stars and would recommend. Um, the other thing to be aware of if you're gonna come out and do some prairie dog hunting, is uh, it's a waiting game. Uh, very much a sit in a spot and watch for them to pop their heads up. Uh, we started out early today, uh, and when we got here, they were coming up, you know, kind of coming up to start their day. And uh, as it's gotten closer to midday, um, they are coming up less and less frequently. Um, so I think we're about to call it. Uh, but like I said, uh, happy to get uh, my first couple of prairie dogs um, in the ground. Very happy to get a personal best shot at 169 yards on a prairie dog. Very happy with that. Um, happy with the performance of the uh, Impact M3 30 cal. Um, shot some with the Hades and shot some with the regular uh, Diabola pellet. Uh, so all around, uh, a great day. Uh, you've probably heard that uh, prairie dogs carry the plague. They don't all carry the plague. They certainly can carry plague. Um, 
if they're allowed to multiply and thrive in a confined area in really large numbers, that will become a problem. Uh, but where they're controlled, that's a significantly reduced potential hazard, which is another reason why some degree of control is necessary in a lot of areas. Uh, prairie dogs are cannibalistic, so um, other prairie dogs in this area are going to eat the ones that we shot. For the most part, uh, they get either left out for predators or scavengers, or they get dumped back in the hole. And in a lot of cases, if the area is very active with prairie dogs, they'll get dragged down into the hole by the other dogs and consumed down there. Um, one last thing. The... Uh, terrain here is very different uh, very short growth and loaded with nettles so if you're out in an environment like this it might pay to before you sit down to take a shot uh, there's actually a bunch of cacti out here too um, ask somebody who knows what they're talking about whether or not it's a good idea to sit on the ground anywhere uh, because I will tell you my experience today was sitting down was a bad idea well, guys, till the next video, uh, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching.